When directing a scene, few elements of style play as immediate and obvious a role as costume design. The costume a character is wearing can convey a great deal of information to the audience within seconds. In what approximate period and location is the scene taking place? What is their social class? What, based on the attire of surrounding characters, are important personality traits we can glean from a character's clothes? In addition to having to effectively and accurately convey all of these elements, good costumes enhance the aesthetic of a film and stand on their own as works of art. While all film, TV, and theater requires the use of costuming, no genre has garnered as much adoration and notoriety as historical dramas. Period pieces have the additional burden of having to emulate the styles of an era in history, adding an additional challenge to an already very difficult job. Perhaps this is why the Academy Award for Best Costume Design goes to period films year after year, with over 75% of all Best Costume Design awards going to historical films. An additional element of period costuming that is less of a concern in other genres is the issue of historical accuracy. Over the years, costume designers have tried to adhere to the styles we know were worn to varying degrees. In some instances, accuracy is a clear priority, and in others, accuracy is overlooked in favor of a range of other factors. I'm going to analyze a number of period films produced in the past 60 years in order to understand the directorial intent behind the historical accuracy of films, and in particular how that intent may have changed over time. I settled on Jane Austen adaptations, which work well for my purposes for a number of reasons. The primary one being, of course, that they are all set within approximately the 1810s and in similar locations, that is, in the world of upper-class England. But there is another key reason why Jane Austen adaptations are a good choice to analyze, and that is that there are a lot of them. Jane Austen is notoriously frequently adapted and has been for decades. With a wide range of films to choose from, I tried to pick ones that were spaced out fairly well and represented a wide range of time periods. The five I will be analyzing are the 1940 film Pride and Prejudice, the 1961 miniseries De Vere Doctors Bennett, the 1995 Sense and Sensibility, the 2005 Pride and Prejudice, and the 2020 Emma. These five movies, and in particular their costumes, show a lot of the changes that were happening in the world of period filmmaking over the 80-year timeline. Upon my first viewing of the 1940 Pride and Prejudice starring Greer Garson and Laurence Olivier, it was immediately clear to me that this was not the fashion of the 1810s. The enormous sleeves, the natural waistline, and the shortened skirts are all extremely indicative of 1830s glamour. It was so clearly unlike the fashion of the original book that the deviation had to have been deliberate. As it turns out, the inaccurate costuming was a deliberate choice that came as a direct result of two key contextual factors surrounding the time period in which the film was made. The first factor was the recent success of Gone with the Wind. If you don't know, Gone with the Wind was a 1939 period romance film set just before the beginning of the American Civil War. The costumes in Gone with the Wind are absolutely gorgeous, and it's easy to see how people during the time of its release would have drooled over the dresses just as we do today. And then in the following year, Pride and Prejudice came out. From its conception, Pride and Prejudice was very much trying to ride the coattails of Gone with the Wind. When you look at the costume design of the two films, the similarities are undeniable. The second factor was the looming threat of war. Production companies were working on tighter budgets, so a full ensemble of Regency-era garments wasn't exactly practical. Additionally, the slim, classical silhouettes from the era were probably not what people wanted to see when they went to the movies, eager for an escape from their lives of rationing and wartime stresses. Instead, the silhouettes of the 1830s provide volume, extravagance, and a beautiful, if brief, escapist fantasy. The trend of costumes not quite belonging in the setting of the film continues in the 1961 Dutch miniseries De Veer Doctors Bennett, or The Four Daughters Bennett. It's hard to say exactly what period is being emulated in this adaptation, but I would place it at approximately the 1850s. While it doesn't seem as though the reasoning behind this anachronism is as developed as it was for the 1940 Pride and Prejudice, it shows an interesting trend, especially as we look at the developments of costumes in later adaptations. The 1995 Sense and Sensibility is the third movie I watched, and it's the first one that has clear influences from approximately the Regency era. 
This, as well as the 2005 Pride and Prejudice, is said to have taken more inspiration from the fashion trends of the 1790s and 1800s as opposed to the 18-teens when the novels were set. I group these two movies together because, to me, they represent the growing trend towards historical accuracy in much the same ways. The costume designers for Sense and Sensibility, Jenny Beaven and John Bright, were clear that historical accuracy was a priority for them when designing the costumes for the film. Similarly, Jacqueline Duran, the Academy Award-nominated costume designer for Pride and Prejudice, consulted contemporary drawings when creating the costumes. Concessions in direct recreation of historical styles were made for Pride and Prejudice in favor of modern aesthetic appeal, but the costumes still clearly try to evoke Regency styles. While not perfect, these two films clearly draw influence from the Regency era, while still being imbued with distinct stylistic choices in order to tell the story visually. Lastly, the 2020 film Emma is an example of historical accuracy in costuming taking full priority. The accuracy of this film is taken to an extreme, as is every other aspect of its set design, music, and its depiction of social norms and customs. This film is first and foremost a beautiful showcase of life for English aristocracy in the early 19th century, and it excels in this domain. In looking at these five films, an interesting trend stuck out to me. It seemed to me that as time passed, filmmakers were willing to include costumes that didn't conform as closely to the contemporary fashion trends. In 1940, costume designer Gilbert Adrian decisively changed the fashion for clear reasons that today we can trace back to historical events at the time. But the others are a bit more nebulous. From the Four Daughters Bennett, with its ambiguously mid-century silhouette, to the tight ringlets and ridiculous top knots of Autumn de Wilde's Emma, we can see a gradual transition from something that is perhaps more pleasant to the modern eye to something that clearly adheres to beauty standards of the past. A potential reason for this could be a greater sense of open-mindedness in audiences. Since the 1940s, we have been exposed to different people and cultures to an ever-increasing degree, and with that has come more awareness and appreciation of diverse aesthetics. This appreciation extends to fashion of the past as well, just look at the rise of online content surrounding dress history and how things actually looked. That being said, one shouldn't inherently snub costumes that they deem historically inaccurate. While period costume designers do have a responsibility to research and respect the era they are depicting, costume design is at the end of the day a tool to convey stories and meaning. Creative liberties should be encouraged, and I, for one, am excited to see artful costume design that combines well-researched history with modern innovations.